Welcome to the Creative Pugza. In this tutorial, you will learn how to colorize black and white images in Affinity Photo. Black and white photography began in 1826 by Joseph Niepce of France. Black and white or monochromatic photography was the main way people captured images until the mid 20th century. People attempted to create color photography back in the 1840s but were unsuccessful. But in 1907, French Lumiere brothers created the first commercially successful color photography process. They invented the Lumiere autochrome. First, go to File Open and select the picture of the rose. Since we're going for realism, we want to use realistic colors when coloring the rose. In nature, wild roses are red, white, or pink. Sometimes roses can be shades of orange, yellow, purple, brown, and green, but these colors are seen in domestic cultivars. The colors blue and black do not naturally form in roses. So from the selection of colors I listed, you can choose the color you want to make the rose. I'm going to color the rose pink. I googled rose pink hex code to get the pink rose shade. Before we color the rose, I want to add a background to the image. This part is optional. Go to the layers panel and click the add pixel layer icon. Label this layer background. Set the blend mode of this layer to color. Now go to the swatches panel. Double click on the fill color to bring up the color chooser. Since the rose will be pink or whatever color you decide to make it, you want to choose a background color that will complement the rose. The color I chose is apricot. Enter the following hex code, FBCEB1. Grab the flood fill tool from the tools panel and click on the image. Make sure the pixel layer is selected first. The layer will be filled with the chosen color. Next, click the Add Pixel Layer icon in the Layers panel. Label this layer Rose. After that, grab the Selection Brush tool from the Tools panel. Make sure the Rose layer is selected. In the Context toolbar, set the Mode to Add and check the Snap to Edges box. Take the tool and make a selection of the rose. To increase the size of the brush, press the right bracket key. Press the left bracket key to decrease the brush size. Also, if you select an area you didn't want to select, press the Alt key and take the brush and go over the area to deselect it. Once you've selected the rose, go to the Swatches panel. Double click the fill color to bring up the color chooser. Enter the color you've chosen for the rose. For the pink rose color, enter the following hex code, FF66CC. Then grab the Flood Fill tool from the Tools panel. Take the tool and click on the rose. In the Layers panel, set the Blend Mode to Color. Press Ctrl and D to deselect. Grab the Paintbrush tool from the Tools panel. In the Swatches panel, make sure the rose color is selected. Also make sure the rose layer is selected in the Layers panel. Take the brush and go over any areas of the rose that didn't get colored. Alternatively, instead of making a selection of the rose like we did, you could have taken the Paintbrush tool and started painting in the rose. Now click the Add Pixel Layer icon in the Layers panel to add another layer. Label this layer Stem. Set the Blend Mode to Color. Grab the Selection Brush tool from the Tools panel. In the Context toolbar, set the Mode to Add and check the Snap to Edges box. Make sure you have the Stem layer selected. Then take the brush and select the stem along with the leaf and this little area beneath the rose and the little area on the other side of the rose. After that, double click on the fill color in the swatches panel to bring up the color chooser. For the green color of the stem, I googled flower stem green color. Enter the following hex code 006C00. Then grab the flood fill tool from the tools panel. Take the tool and click in the stem area. The areas we selected will be filled with the green color. Press Ctrl and D to deselect. Now we'll colorize a black and white photo using another method. Go to File Open and select the image of the woman in the grass. Press Ctrl and J to duplicate the image. Next, go to the Tools panel and grab the End Painting tool. This tool allows you to remove things from images. I want to remove this object over here. Take the tool and go over the black object in the sky to remove it. Now grab the Selection Brush tool from the Tools panel. Make sure the duplicated layer is selected. In the Context toolbar, set the Mode to Add and check the Snap to Edges box. Take the brush and select the grass. 
After you've selected the grass, click the Adjustments icon in the Layers panel. Select the Color Balance Adjustment. Since green is the color we want to use for the grass, we we'll need to add cyan and yellow to the image to get green. In the midtones, take the cyan red slider and slide it to the left to add cyan. I set this to negative 27%. Go to the yellow blue slider and slide this slider to the left to add yellow. I set this to negative 27% too. Your percentages can be different depending on how green you want the grass to be. Now go to the magenta green slider and slide it to the right to add green to the midtones. I set this to 44%. After that, go to the shadows. Slide the cyan red and the yellow blue slider slightly to the left to add cyan and yellow to the shadows. I set the cyan red to negative 22% and the yellow blue to negative 14%. Then slide the magenta green slider to the right. I set it to 18%. Now go to the highlights. Add cyan and yellow to the highlights by sliding the cyan red and the yellow blue sliders to the left. I set the cyan red to negative 22% and the yellow blue to negative 19%. Then go to the magenta green sliders and slide it to the right. I set it to 13%. Label this layer grass. Press Ctrl and D to deselect. Grab the Flesh Select tool from the Tools panel. Click the Duplicated Image in the Layers panel. In the Context toolbar, set the Mode to New, Source to Current Layer, and Tolerance to 20%. Also, check the Contiguous box. Take the tool and click the Sky Area. Next, grab the Selection Brush tool from the Tools panel. This time, set the Mode to Subtract. Then take the brush and go over the woman's hand to exclude it from the selection. In the Layers panel, click the Adjustments icon. Select the Curves Adjustment. Since we want to have a blue sky, we need to make adjustments to the red and blue channels. Go to the red channel. Place a point in the middle of the curve and drag it slightly down and to the right. Add a point further up the curve and drag it down some. Then select the point on the right and slide it down. Go to the blue channel. Select the point on the left and slide it up some. Next, add a point in the middle and drag it up and slightly to the left. Label this layer sky and press Ctrl and D to deselect. To colorize the woman in her dress, we're going to create a palette. We'll use reference photos to select the colors we need. Go to the stock panel. If you don't see it, go to the view menu. Then go to studio and select stock to check it. In the stock panel, you can find royalty free images to use from third party sites such as Unsplash, Pexels, and Pixabay. I'm using Unsplash, but you can use any one of the three. In the search, type woman. We want to find an image that's similar to ours so that we can find a color for the skin tone, hair, and the clothes. When you find the image you want to use, drag it onto the document. I'm using this image of a woman in a sunflower field. Resize the image if necessary using the Move tool to make it smaller. Click off the image when you're done. In the Tools panel, grab the Color Picker tool. In the context toolbar, make sure the apply to selection box is unchecked and the source is global. Then set the radius to average five by five. This takes the average of 25 pixels, five vertically and five horizontally. Take the tool and select an area of skin from your reference photo. Then in the swatches panel, click the circle next to the color picker tool. Click the hamburger menu icon and select Add Document Palette to create a palette inside of the current document. After that, click the icon that says Add Current Field to Palette. This will add the color we sample to the palette. I want to sample the hair color from the woman in this picture too. So take the Color Picker tool and click an area of the woman's hair to sample it. Don't sample a black color because that color won't color the hair. Then click the circle next to the color picker in the swatches panel and click the add current field to palette icon again. Delete the reference image when you're finished. If you don't want to sample the hair color from your current picture, go back to the stock panel and search for hair. Then select an image you want to use and sample the color from it. 
We'll now find colors to use for the woman's dress and shirt. Go to the stock panel, search for dress. Select an image you want to use for the dress color. I chose this picture of a woman in an orange dress. Take the picture and drag it onto the document and resize it with the move tool. Click off the reference image when you're done. Then grab the color picker tool. In the context toolbar, make sure the apply to selection box is still unchecked. Next, take the tool and sample the color you want to use for the dress. Then click the circle near the color picker. After that, click add current fill to palette. Delete the reference image. Now we'll choose a color for the woman's shirt. Go to the stock panel and search for shirts. Find the reference image you want to use for the shirt color and drag it onto the document. I chose this image of the collar shirts. Take the move tool and resize the image. Then click off of the image. Now grab the color picker tool. Take the tool and sample the color from the reference picture you want to use for the shirt color. Then click the circle next to the color picker tool. After that, click the add current fill to palette icon. Delete the reference image. We'll now use the colors from our palette to color the woman in her dress. In the layers panel, click the add pixel layer to add a new layer. Label this layer skin and change the blend mode to overlay. Make sure this layer is at the top. Grab the paintbrush tool from the tools panel. In the swatches panel, select the first color we added to the palette. Next, go to the brushes panel and go to the basic brushes. Select one of the round soft brushes. Make sure the pixel layer is selected. Then take the brush and start painting the skin of the woman. Press the left bracket key to decrease the brush size and the right bracket key to increase the size. To zoom in, press Ctrl and the plus key. Press Ctrl and the minus key to zoom out. In the layers panel, click the add pixel layer icon. Label the layer hair and change the blend mode to color. With the paintbrush tool active, select the second color we added. Take the brush and paint the hair to add color to it. Now click the add pixel layer icon again and label it dress. Change the blend mode to color. In the swatches panel, select the third color we added. Take the paintbrush tool and paint the dress. After that, click the add pixel layers icon one more time to add another layer. Label this layer shirt. Set the blend mode of this layer to color. Select the fourth color we added to our palette in the swatches panel. Take the brush and paint the shirt. And this is how to colorize black and white images in Affinity Photo. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please give it a thumbs up, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell icon to turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. Thank you for watching.